child. She needs to nurse the baby. And the question is, what do you do in the case of divorce or separation? Sometimes, while there is a dynamic between um, husband and wife or ex and his wife, um, unfortunately, the child is in between. In our first case, it's um, a case of divorce, um, believed to be a bitter divorce. Um, the mother insisted that she doesn't want to nurse the baby. And the concern we have is she is willing to abide by us, meaning by the rabbinic court, and we ask a question if the assumption is that this baby will not survive without the milk from its mother, can we force the mother to nurse the baby? So in short, before we go to the sugiyah, to the practical study and alachot, the idea is if the baby recognizes his mother and the baby refused to be nursed by other women, then we basically ask her to nurse the child and we uh, bring some type of appraisal and pay her to nurse her baby. The question is, what is the period of time that you say that this baby recognized its mother? Do you say that that means that she nursed that baby for three months and now it's a huge issue and she refused to nurse the child and you claim that that baby recognized his mother? Do you say that they estimate it's a 50 days, it's a 30 days, it's a three views? So you may say that this baby is not eating because the baby wants, he or she meant, wants specifically the milk from the mother. So for sure, the conclusion is we need to check every single case and every single baby. In each case, it's different. But that's the beginning stage of our study. Today we're also um, going to study um, the issue of refusal to nurse a sick baby. This is a heartbroken case that um, happened there and happened again, unfortunately, throughout our history. Is the child that was born very ill and the mother wants to disconnect it from the baby and, and she feels that this child will not make it and she refused to, um, to nurse him because she doesn't want to be attached to that baby. So the question is, what exactly you recognize as a um, period of nursing the child and, and how far you go with that? Another subject we're going to discuss in this session today is the issue of min hatame You have, for example, a bee, right? B is one of those um, um, prohibited fly that we cannot eat, yet we're allowed to eat honey. What's the rule? You talk about cow, you allow both. You allow the, the milk and you allow the meat. How come bees are prohibited while the honey is permitted? Another subject, times allow, we're going to speak about um, Shabbat situation. If your um, um, uh, faucet get clogged, bathroom get clogged, right? Do you allow to do a plumbing job to open it on Shabbat? And if yes, in what condition? And the last but not the least is the issue of um, you have a student and you have a rabbi or teacher and the rabbi said to the student, it's okay for you to rule halachot, to make um, halachic decisions. Um, is really the student allowed to rule while the teacher is there? It's a subject to discuss here. In general, we know that the student is not allowed to rule when the teacher is there, but if the teachers allow him, 
is that okay in some circumstances? So we are now on page 59, really the last line, Imaya Makira, which means here we have a situation that the baby recognized his divorced mother. So the, the, we said, the Mishnah tells us that the husband can compel her to continue nursing even after she is divorced, yet he needs, the husband, the ex, need to pay his ex an extra amount of money that it's not in a divorce agreement in that sense um, for nursing the baby, especially if it's a life-saving situation. Let me show with you a Rambam. Ilchot um, uh, uh, Ishut, chapter 21. It's also in the code in Shulchan Aruch Eben 82. If a child has begun to nurse from his mother, one cannot separate him from her due to the possible danger involved. There is a, a no precise stage at which this applies. As, um, it depends on whether the child recognizes his mother. In accordance with the opinion of Shmuel, which we're going to study, um, um, uh, however, there are uh, authority who rules that we follow Rabbi Yitzchak, so you see the Reef and Rosh um, uh, said that if the ch a child began to nurse from a wet nurse, she can be com compelled to continue to nurse him if you recognize her and resist nursing from another woman. So we are on page 60 on top of the page. <clears throat> page 60 again, Ad Kama. Well, how old is the baby in order to make sure that he recognized um, uh, his mother and the Rosh Ed and he's not willing to nurse from another woman? Meaning the period is three months. Three months period. So that's the time that um, he stick to his mother. He recognizes her. He wants to nurse only from her. Period. Some say of Yudah Mashmuel said 30 days. 30 days it's kind of hard. 30 days, those of us who are blessed with uh, many kids, like myself, it's kind of hard to believe that it's 30 days period. Is. Anyway, the Rabbi Yitzchak and Rabbi Yochanan Hamishim Yom, he holds 50 days. Amar Rabbi Shimi Bar Abayei, Alachak Rabbi Yitzchak, Hashemar Mishum Rabbi Yochanan. So here, in a way, it's almost like in between, as he said, 50 days, you can say it's like middle opinion that he recognizes his mother, he doesn't want to nurse from another woman, fine. So, again, you have to differentiate between babies. There are some babies who are extremely shrewd and, and they recognize, fine. But there are some who have not recognized the mother until they reach a point of three months. So, how do you determine? You're going to tell me according to Shmuel there are some baby or you make a general rule for all the babies that 30 days period is the time that they recognize the mother. The He said, don't listen to that view that my brother said on behalf of um, Shmuel. You know what the truth Shmuel Shmuel was a giant sage. They said on his behalf, if you know that that baby recognizes his mother, all kind of signal. So it's not something that you total measure. And you said it is definite. It's uh, it's something that you see in all kind of different ways that he um, recognizes. So in that sense, the husband again, um, or the ex in that sense, um, but for our uh, explanation is the husband uh, can in a way ask or, or almost like um, enforce 
the chi should um, 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 nurse the child even after they divorced. Aida Atayla Kamedishmol, here's a story about a divorced woman that she refused to nurse the child before Shmuel. Amar Lele Ravdimi Bar Yosef Dil Badka. You know what? Let's test to see what exactly the relationship between the child and the mother. Azar Udva Bedarei Nashi. So it's a group of ladies who sit together, right? Uh, most probably we assume some rabbis say that they are all about the same age. So it means that they either nursing or, 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 or somehow that recognize them. So they put this baby on the, li on the um, laps of all those ladies. And this is a heartbroken situation, right? The mother did not want to connect with the child, so she turned her face from him. She doesn't want to look at the, at the child. So she really tried to demonstrate, a, in a way, a disconnectedness from the baby. So she turned the face from the baby. He says, um, it doesn't help. So we assume, reading it, that most probably the baby start crying or the, or the, or the, the baby recognizes that everyone sees that the baby recognizes. Even she turned her face from the baby. That's it. So the Gemara asks a question, painful question, Suma Menayeda. So if that's the case, how you determine if the baby is blind? God forbid. So how you tell me now that the baby recognized its mother? Amar Ashi again, show you the, the wisdom of the rabbis. They say, Bereicha uve ta'ama. He smells um, um, uh, the, the taste of the, the, of, the, of the milk. You can see it. Again, I can speak because I'm blessed with the, um, um, many children, grandchildren, that um, when the mother is need, need to nurse, even she's uh, dressed, you know, with um, full dress, twice dress, right? They still this child starts crying when you put his or her face close um, to her. They smell the milk. You feel it that they, they, they start crying when they want. Even not always, they even hungry, they start. Anyway. There is a discussion among the poskim, among the rabbis, if the baby is terminally ill, God forbid, born, and now the doctors really have little hope over that baby. And the mother come before the rabbis and she said she refused to nurse the child because she's afraid that she will be too attached to the child and then the departure um, soon to be with the child will be overwhelming for her. Um, so the rabbis rule that you cannot really um, push her hard, you cannot force her to nurse the child. The Pardes Yosef, one of the rabbinic writing on the Torah, he asked in the book of Shemot, of Exodus, the story of Batya, the daughter of Pharaoh, the famous story that um, they said about Moses that he did not want to nurse um, 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 from anyone else, only from his mother. So she said, the Torah said, that she said, but yeah, the Lord of Pharaoh said, I recognize that this is a Hebrew child. So he asked how did Batya know that, um, that um, it's a Hebrew child? Um, and he came out from the word Na'ar Boche, the baby is uh, crying. That it said this mouth is not just a regular mouth. Spiritually speaking, this is a mouth pekadosh. This is a mouth that's supposed to talk to the divine providence later. So that mouth didn't want even to attach himself to um, to someone else that it's not his mother. Anyway, Tanu Abana, the rabbis teach us in a brighter. Your neck tinok veolech. 24 hours. The period of time that the that the uh, baby will nurse is um, it's um, 24 months, which is 24 months is two two years period. But otherwise, it's uh, like the one who nurses from a non-kosher animal, and therefore you cannot um, use it. Um, 
דברי רבי אליעזר, רבי יהושע אומר אפילו ארבע וחמש שנים. Which means, תוספות אקספנדר, you have to differentiate between um, healthy baby that can go for four years and if it's a very um, skinny, unhealthy, can go even, תוספות הראש said, um, even five years. The shah said in Yoredi, ah, 81, that that period of time, it's just to make sure because um, there are some who say that the more the baby will nurse, the healthy the baby will be. Peirash l'achal 24 chodesh v'chazal k'yonek sheket. Meaning, if the baby departed, he doesn't want to nurse anymore. And it's a period of time that it's not nursing. Now he's back, so that's you treated as uh, one who nurses from a non-kosher animal. Amar mar, mikan v'elach k'yonek sheket v'ramini. Yachol yeh chalav b'halchei shtayim. Tamer. So it prohibited the dinu. See, we're running out of time. Okay. ומה במה שהקלת במגע, איך מרת בחלבה, אדם שהחמרת במגעו, אין עוד שאת החמיר בחלבו. תלמוד לומר את הגמל כמעלה גרעו. הוא טמא ואין חלב, מהלכי שתיים טמא אלא טהור. So, the, the Torah said, טמא הוא לכם. So, which means, here we differentiate between, the run explain, between the mother's meal and the, um, the animal meal. יכול להוציא את החלב שאינו שווה בכל. ולא הוציא את הדם שהוא שווה בכל תלמוד לומר הוא, הוא טמא בן דם על חשתיים טמא אלא טהור. So here, this is one of the Hashem's miracle, because it's blood that turned to be a milk in that sense. So again, we differentiate between the two. אמר רב ששת, אפילו מצוות פרישה אין בו. So רב ששת הורד, that even the, the, the commandment to refrain from consuming human milk, So therefore, this uh, presents a contradiction to the statement that the child who nurses behind a certain age is like one who nurses from a non-kosher animal. So the Gemara said, Lokashia had a farish, had a lo parish. The one, the brother that allowed this milk, it means that it's departure from the body of the mother, that you can drink it, versus the other that is still uh, not. So as you know, You have nowadays a special machine sometimes that you take the milk because in some babies they can drink it that way but for all kinds of reasons they do not attach to the um, mother um, for different reasons. So uh, here we differentiate. He said if it's out, it's different than directly. The Rosh said um, um, the fear is that people basically mix up between Uh, the same ways that the mother's milk allowed, so also the others allow. The Chatam Sofer derived from that, again, as a side note, is the issue when you have an aquarium, right? You restore temporarily fish in order to eat them. If you combine um, kosher and non-kosher fish, if um, um, you can later on use some of them um, for food, There is an issue of bli'a um, that they are combining in some ways. Uh, the same for sure applies if um, it's a dead fish and you combine kosher and non-kosher and you restore them in the same freezer. It's an issue to eat them according to Khatam Sofer. Anyway, וחילופה בדם כנתניה, דם של גבי כיכר גוררו ואוכלו שמנשי מוצצו ואינו חושש. So here Tosfot explained that this is the issue of mar'it ayin. Again, people who are not educated. You remember the other day we talked about kidney oil and Pesach and rice and all the... The issue usually is that people who are not educated, they think that all of a sudden we're allowed to taste blood. So, for example, if you have margarine, right? Some are calling uh, this guy. Or you have a par of milk. And you have a, a flesh, you have a meat meal. Some rabbis are very unhappy with that. So you see, sometimes halachically you're correct, but there is an issue. Someone can translate this word, mar'it ayin. What is mar'it ayin? Uh, Appearance? Yeah, it's, it's perception. Oh. Percep oh. Perception, yeah. yeah. Perceptions. You're sitting and eating in the total meat meal and you are not educated, you have people who are not educated, and all of a sudden they see a milk there, even that milk is total par, 
those people who may be misconstrued. So that's the perception is a problematic. Amal can I, Shoma, yes. Sorry, can I ask it's sort of a practical question, but I mean it's somewhat related. Um, with an egg, if you um, you're preparing a, a milked meal with egg, and you you open the egg and you find that there's a little bit of blood in the egg, and you so you've opened it up into a milky container that you you then you were planning on mixing it. Now it's it's the container is straight for so the container is is, is done. Also, not kosher has to be thrown out, even but not not bitul bashishim. Done. Can't be bitul bashishim at all. Never bitul. Okay. Recent case was in Neibrak in Israel. The great Rabbi Lando, who is the Ashkenazic chief rabbi, so he gave hechsher to Kondetuya, to one of the um, how do you call Kondetuya? It's like a place that they make cakes. Mm -hmm. Bakery. Bakery, thank yeah. you. Bakery. And he's smart enough. You know, in Israel, they have to check every egg. Sure. Because you have those eggs that come from who knows? Arab villages, farm place, no stamps. Israelis, there are some from Turkey. Yeah, this, Turkey. Happened, this happened to me yesterday. Horrible. It happened, anyway, no, I'm just saying, it happened so to me. He, so it happens here. Yeah. He sent the, yes. the spies, the mashgichi, and they said that as much as you think that they're checking, it's a huge bakery, they're cheating. So three in the morning, he sent inspectors and they caught them taking containers of eggs, just breaking them and throw them in the pot. Um, he put an ounce and he closed that, that business, meaning he took off the ashgacha and no one in the religious city wants to buy from that bakery. Anyway. Yeah, well, this is, I mean, <laughs> just so you know, this is interesting because mostly with white eggs, you can inspect them and see right. This happened, these were brown eggs with a hexha. Wow. <laughs> with a hexha. But in the kitchen, we always crack the eggs separate and then add it to I, the I, under, I understand. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It happened. I mean, I, I traced the, the bowl, but... <laughs> I knew that Israelis sometimes get, unfortunately, the cheaper from Turkey or from Arab mm -hmm. villages and mm -hmm. places like that, and it's an issue. But these were anyway. these were organic, you know, cage-free eggs. So you know, it, I mean, it happens here with right. mostly with a lot of the eggs you get. I mean, they're all the best case yeah. is just to check everyone. I know that's a big. big you got to open them to check them when they're brown. That's problem. <laughs> So it means it's um, no limitation. Okay, Tanya, Rabbi Marinus Omer Goneach Yonek Chalav Beshabbat. Again, remember the perception of time. It was at that time. One of the healing for some, some certain serious illnesses is for someone who nurses directly from the goat, directly from the animal. So they said, if a person is in such a situation, so in the concept in Shabbat is called Le'achar Yad, which is the rabbinic allowance when it's been come tzar, when it's a great tzara, sorrow, the rabbis did not prohibit it, so allowed to do it. Even in general, we're not allowed to do chaliva be Shabbat, to, to take milk from a goat on Shabbat. My tama, yonek mefarek ki le'achar yad, which means that it's um, the way it's not direct, because that's not the manner of people uh, in the place that they, um, you have a great sorrow, so the rabbis did not uh, decree. So Tosfot in Tracti Shabbat explained that that's apply only to animals and not to a woman. Amarav Yosef alachaki Rabbi Marinus. Tanya, Nachum Mishgalia Omer, Tzino, Shalu Bo Kaskasim, Memarachan Beraglo Betzim'ah. Shabbat. So again, here you have a situation with the, how do you call it, the venting situation. Anyway, that's come from the roof, and you have the pipe, and that pipe um, uh, was clung, right? So, no choshesh, it's basically metaken, you like fixing. My tamat metaken ki leachar yadhu. So here, it's like an unusual matter, since it's uncommon to fix an item without using a tool or one's hand, so that's called shinui, it's not in a regular way. Situation that involving financial laws, the sages did not decree. Again, don't rule just by that. Tosfot tells us that it's melachad rabbanan, it's rabbinic, it's not biblical, but again, 
ואיבן אמר רב יוסף הלכה כנחום משגליה, you have to ask a rabbi, for example, if it's a bathroom clown, or the, or the a, a, a thing uh, filled up. So it's a discussion among the poskim, when, where, and how. One of my teachers, Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Orbach, um, he wrote a book, I mean, Rabbi Norvitz wrote a halachic book, it's called Shmirat Shabbat Kil Chata, and over there it's part of the discussion, when and where and how. So in general, don't rule, just ask, every case is different. פירש לאחר 24 שעות חודש וינק יונק שרץ. וחמה אמר רבי יהודה בר חביבה אמר שמואל שלושה ימים. נקדם נתן רבי יהודה בר חביבה כמיר שמואל שלושה ימים. So here again, the whole that it's um, three days period is the taking effect. תנו רבנן מי נקט. Here they um, nursing women. So, שמת בעלה בתוך 24 חודש, the husband passed within 24 months of her childbirth. הרי זה לא תתארס ולא תתעשה, שהיא לא תתרוד, שהיא לא תתעשה, שהיא לא תתעשה. Why? So obviously the fear is that she may get pregnant and then she lose the ability to nurse the child and the issue is that this is not his child um, and the rabbi said that it's a lot, a lot of uh, consequences. Uh, uh, for example, the new husband doesn't want to support the baby from the former husband, etc. So there is a period that we ask her to wait. 60B, at 24 Chodesh, the Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir holds that the period is 24 months from the day that the child was born. So the idea is that uh, we want to protect the child. But if uh, she remains um, um, if she, I'm sorry, in other words, if she all of a sudden um, got married to a new husband and all of a sudden shortly after she was pregnant, um, is the issue of nursing the child, um, the issue of uh, child support from the new husband. So therefore, the Rabbi Meir asked her to wait two years. The Rabbi Yudah Matir, Mishmona Sachodesh, Rabbi Yudah allowed her to get married a months after all so the baby can grow up um, even without remember in those days they don't have which we have today new companies with materna and other alternative um, formula f formula thank you for mm -hmm. for children so the Gmaran Gittin the Mishnah Gittin page 75b uh, elaborates why it's in the 18 months or the other Amar of Natan Bar Yosef Henan Divrei Shamayim Divrei Betile this is a match a disputation between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel. So Beit Shammai matched Rabbi Meir that says 24 months, two years period before she can get married to someone else. And, and uh, Beit Hillel said 18 months, that's matched the view of Rabbi Yehuda. And Rabbi Yehuda said 18 months, that's matched the view of Rabbi Yehuda. And Rabbi Yehuda said 18 months, that's matched the view of Rabbi Yehuda. Or some said Ani Afaresh, which means our rule or our interpreted this different. The Divrei Ha'am is 24 months, but it's 21 months. So basically he said, even the one who said 24 months, you can go backward three months with her uh, marriage. One who said 18 months, you can go 15 months. What does that mean? Why? Because you go to, to the, the fish, because the woman that is pregnant, the milk will not spoil, her eternal milk will not spoil, and until they reach a point of three months. See how smart is those sages. Only after three months from the time that she get pregnant. So for example, if the baby need to be nursed in a 24 months period, she can get married three months before the end of that period. So meaning even she get pregnant right after her become married to a new husband, she can have a sufficient um, nursing period of three months until the completion of the 24 months. So it's a ruling, we say Adama Ula Alachakira Biuda. So it means that the baby needs 18 months of nursing. He said that Rabbi Hanan allow me to go again to the most lenient period, which is 15 months, three months, um, um, to reach the 18 months. Most of the poskim, most of the rabbis go by the 24 months. Uh, the Pnei Yoshua said that with the Avad, after the fact, we can go lenient. Um, 
It's a big question among the rabbis how you treated the months in the leap year. Do you count the months or not? Anyway, Arisid Abaya Tikamela Abaye. Amar Leu Mau Learez Bachamisha Sachodesh. It's okay to get in a 15 months. Listen carefully, it's an interesting story. Amar Le Hadad Rabbi Meir Rabbi Yuda. Alahaki Rabbi Yuda, which means you can go by the 15 months. Vod Bachamar Betil Alahaki Betile. Disputation between Bachamar and Betile usually will go by. So meaning you can go by the 15 months period. Amar Ula halacha ki Rabbi Yehuda. Amar Ula kvar itin li ti Rabbi Yehuda la set acharim shas achodesh. Meaning again we go by the linear view 15 months plus three, right? Bekol shekem de at learest. If you only want to be thrown, be thrown. So it's not issue of stop per meal. It's not issue of cohabitation between the two. So the only is rabbinic decree because we hold the marriage. So you hold the same uh, fashion, the same manner. Kiyata lekamed Rabbi Yosef when Abaye came before the great Rabbi uh, Rabbi Yosef, and he asked him to rule. Amar lei he responded him Rabbi Shmuel Dam that Rabbi Yosef had done seventy-four months. Both hold that she need to wait twenty-four months. Chutz miyom shenolad bo, and chutz miyom shentarsa bo, excluding the day that the baby was born or her day of engagement. Rahat batreit latap parse. He uh, rushed after him. A three parsaot through the sense he wanted to inform him that he should not rely on the leniency, but rather he should act according to Rabbi Shmuel, who prohibited the betrothal. So the Amrila parsa bechala velo adkare. He is not. He wasn't successful to catch him. So the Maharam Shif derived from that the idea of ran and not catching. That when it's come to halacha, the you need to have a special siyata dishmai, a special help from from heaven to rule properly. So here you see, Amar Abaye Haimita Damu Rabbanan, Afilu Biata Bechutcha Lo Lish Reinish Bimkom Rabbe. This is an important uh, um, uh, concept that a person should not permit even eating an egg with kutaf, which is a dish made with milk, in teacher vicinity. What does that mean? Uh, this is a very basic, very simple ruling. An egg is not uh, meat and may uh, unquestionably be eaten with milk, but the idea is a student lo inish bin kom rabbei. A student not uh, rule when the, the teacher, the rabbi is there. Lo mishum de mirze ke'af kriwuta, ela mishum mistaya milta. So there is a concept that, um, uh, not because it looks like a half kill that kill, it's inappropriate, but because uh, it doesn't have a, a help from heaven to do it. In a sense that um, Tosfot explained, even the, the rabbi said, Mahal Kvodo, it's fine, you can rule. You need to have a special heavenly uh, help to rule properly. So the Ha'ana Avagmira Le'ad Rabbi Shmuel, Vafiluachim Misteyale Mitele so he said, even uh, um, me, which means that, uh, um, that uh, I have the consent of my teachers, but still, it's, in other words, even you are a giant sage, is a story about Rabbi Schwab, a great Rabbi Schwab. So it's a woman uh, contacting him, and he ruled, and then he realized that it was a mistake. So he sat and he cried, and he said to heal him, and he died, and he prayed, and he prayed, and prayed. And then all of a sudden, he got a phone call. And the woman was in line, and she asked him about Basar Vachala, the issue of mixing and giving. He said to her, Do you, are you the one who just talked to me about half an hour ago? She said, yes. He says, oh, you relieve me. I'm so glad you called me because I made a mistake in ruling. So the point is, it's, uh, in the past generation, was a great rabbi by the name of Official Hershkowitz. He was a great uh, sage in uh, New York City. So he said, one time a fellow came to him and asked him a question, new rules, and it turned to be a mistake. And he prayed and davened and said to him, and all of a sudden, an hour later, that person came back and said, you told me something and I don't remember what you said. Hmm. Can you repeat? Hmm. So he said, this is what Maharam Shiv said, he chased him and he not reach him, which means beside of the ruling, beside of the idea that even the teacher allow you, you still should not rule because beside of the ruling itself and your knowledge, you need to have an extra siyata dishmaya, extra help from heaven 
to rule and to rule the way the Almighty wants you to rule. Tanu Rabanan, Natna Bna Lemineket Ogmalto, Omet Mutelet Linase Miyad. If she gave with payment to some other woman to nurse the child, or she finished the period of nursing the child, or if the child, unfortunately, has Misholem, God forbid, passed away, she allowed to marry immediately. She doesn't need to wait the 24 months period because she's no longer nursing the child, so you don't have any dangers that she can get pregnant from the second husband. Rav Papa Ravuna Bred Rav Yoshua, Savur Lemevad Uvda Kiamat Nita. So they, they allow, want to do in that uh, sense to marry in the period of the nursing. Amalua is safta. I have that situation. Vasali Rab Nachman. Rab Nachman did not allow me as the head of the rabbinic court to get married in the period of 24 months. So the Gemara asks, Rab Nachman allow in the house of the exilier to marry right after they handed over the baby to a nurse by money. Shani Beit Reish Galuta de lo Adarbu. Shani Beit Reish Galuta is different because over there, uh, the rule is um, if someone gets a payment, she's not returned in the period of 24 months. So Moshe Feinstein said, Zechel Tzadik Yibrach, he said the name of Rishlam El Kluger, that um, in a way, when you're ruling, when we said 18 versus 24, it's like the new Bedin taking a chance is dangerous to rule against the old Bedin. And since the old Bedin, the, the previous one, ruled the 24, we should stick that way. But Abu Hashulchan said that if we have a concern, sometimes you have a serious concern that the mother indirectly will kill the baby. In a sense, she is not going to nurse the child, and as a result, the baby will naturally die. So, so here is the difference. If there is a nurse, the nurse, she's uh, the mother watching over the, the, the other woman that nursed the child, that's a different story. But the Beit Meir have a big um, discussion about the Sagat Gvul. Um, so he's talking about when and where and how you're allowed to her to get married. Amalu Rav Papi Ba'atulu, Lotis Beruah, Mehalet Tanya, Aresha Ita Redufa, this is my Yevamot, they said, Tosefta Yevamot, Aresha Ita, when she's married, Redufa, Lelech Lebet Avia, so she gets used to go to her father's house uh, and she stayed there for a long time before he passed or if it's a fight within her husband and she no longer needs her husband at least three months before the passing or the husband before the passing or three months in jail or the husband was overseas or the husband is no longer capable to have children or he was a, a ill ill or she was a childbearer or old or incapable or she miscarried after the husband uh, gone and we know that she is not pregnant from him. All needs to wait a three months period. That's the uh, rules of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yossi matir leares v'nase minyan. Rabbi Yossi allowed to engage in marriage immediately and no need for three months period because for sure they are not pregnant. Rabbi Moshe finds and have a big discussion over issue of get. Um, he, um, when exactly you hold um, get kasher, for example, if um, a woman is about to get married and all of a sudden they challenge the get, uh, they start saying that the get was not uh, uh, good, so it was a big discussion if you need to wait the three, because the idea is the moment you challenge the previous get, then you, even you provide a new one, you need to wait three months period before she gets married to someone else. So in short, by halakha, you do need to wait the three months period. Um, there is discussion both, Khatam Sofer and Odab Yuda and others, um, <coughs> if um, you have, uh, for example, a poison milk from the mother. In some cases, you see it that, uh, that it endangers the child. Um, um, or the, ch the, the child was born with the mouth that cannot nurse from its mother, you know, in such a way. So the big question is, um, sh she needs to wait a three months period or not, it's a discussion, the W. and others discussion. We forgot that right up. If the, the past, so 24 months, you allow to the mother to get married, 
So, so if she um, um, nurses that uh, period, she cannot marry because um, maybe happen that is too earlier and versus when the child is dead, so you don't have that concern. Even in past, why? God forbid she may be dead on purpose in order for her to get married. So, uh, it was a case that the mother did it to the baby in order for her to get married to someone that she wants to. So the Gemara rejected said, said, that's not a normal case, that's a crazy one, that woman was insane, she, that woman did not ordinarily strangle the children, so one doesn't need to be concerned about this happening. It's such a rare case, you don't do it. So in general, um, you, you have a discussion among rab, uh, several rabbis, for example, the famous South African Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Sternbuch, I have the privilege to be his neighbor in Hanov, in Yerushalayim. So Rav Sternbuch have an issue with a non jews that convert to Judaism, and they are married by the secular non-Jewish world because they are non-Jewish. But then the issue is, after the conversion, if you need to separate them before you marry them by the Jewish law, um, 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 in concern that the baby, if, if she is pregnant, if uh, it happens before the conversion, the baby need to go to the conversion versus if it happened after it's not. So he asked that question: If you allow to do uh, kiddushim, the medal of betrothal, be, um, between that period of time, if you need to wait three months, if it's a pat besalo, it's not. Um, sometimes he said that it's already they are married couple; they already live together. Um, so it's a big uh, writing of Rav Sternbuch, and um, uh, we will discuss that in the future. Shuloim, Malachai, Shuloim, Malachai.